Hey everybody, I uh, want to welcome you to today's uh, mortgage uh, mortgage review. Uh, I'm super excited to have our guest Karen Ziska from the Loya Mortgage Team uh, joining us today. Uh, she is a loan officer extraordinaire. Uh, has a client rating uh, client server 98.6 percent uh, five star with her clients. So she's done a fantastic job. She really fights for them and uh, they appreciate it. Um, she is our local, uh, our resident uh, FHA expert, uh, as well as uh, very well versed with uh, self-employed borrowers, 1099 bank statements. Um, our investors love her. Um, she can help you uh, help you buy your first investment property, your 10th investment property, as well as your 50th investment property. So she's definitely a wealth builder. Um, but uh, today uh, we want to uh, highlight uh, her knowledge uh, with FHA Loans, fantastic program uh, to uh, help entry level buyers, first time home buyers, uh, repeat buyers fantastic program um i've i've always uh, loved fha it's a great opportunity to uh get into uh into the game um i'm a firm believer that uh, the secret to real estate is buy real estate and wait. It's not about waiting to time the market. It's whatever you buy today, uh, you're going to look like a genius in 5, 10, 20 years. Uh, so the secret to wealth building is buy real estate and wait with no further ado, Karen, welcome to the call. Hi, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And buying real estate and not waiting is key. When you look at right now, the appreciation rates 3.4% per year. It's definitely worth buying now and waiting for it to appreciate. So let's talk about FHA loans and bust some of the myths that it is somehow a terrible loan product. It's harder to get approved. And it's harder to get the loans closed. So the FHA loan was actually created to open up the door for more buyers and create more buyers in the uh, housing market. So the goal was to make it easier to afford a home by enabling a homeowner to put less money down where you're putting three and a half percent down and they also have more attractive interest rates. So they don't have stated income, but our, what we do look at is your debt to income ratio. So sometimes people will come to me that, you know, are in a situation where they're looking to qualify and they have either um, social security income for, you know, them, their spouse, maybe a family member. And then I also have people that are self-employed that take advantage of FHA loans. Recently closed a loan for a girl that is self-employed, makes a lot of money, had great credit, but for her situation, she was buying a multifamily property. It made more sense for her to buy with an FHA loan because the interest rate was so much lower than, than the for the same product. So let's get into the meat about those of what an FHA loan is. So there are different types of FHA loans. There's the traditional loan, which is an FHA 203B. And it's just a regular you know, loan that everybody thinks of. So there is a reverse mortgage called a home equity conversion mortgage or a HECM. You've probably heard that that's for people that are 62 and older. And what they're doing is they're exchanging their home equity for cash. A 203K is a renovation loan. So we will give you the money to buy the property plus the money to renovate it and to do home improvements. It can be minor home improvements or it can be something major like adding an addition, putting on um, you know, a second story, refinishing a basement. And then there is an energy efficient FA version also. So when looking at an FA loan in property. The misconception is somehow that the appraisers don't appraise the properties the same way. That's not, the value of the property is not going to change. Appraisers look at a property based on what are the recent sales in the area. The only difference of what they look at is the condition of the property. Is there chipping, peeling paint, rotten wood, infestation, um, exposed wires, missing handrails, trip hazards, 
or is it next to a gas station? So they're looking for a hazard and to ensure that the property is in move in condition where a buyer is not going to be inundated with a bunch of repairs as soon as they move into the property. And if you look at a house, let's say you love the house, you love the neighborhood, but it does need a roof. It does have exposed wires. It has something wrong with it. Well, we can look at a renovation loan as an option. So we include the cost with the cost to buy it. Um, and you're then able to move into a house that is renovated. Depending on the amount of renovations, we don't require you you to into it during renovation, you can finance up to six months of payments while you're rehabbing the property. So let's look at the price point of houses and how much of a house can you buy. These are loan single family home. You can get loan up to four hundred and ninety eight thousand. Two units six thirty seven and change obviously three unit 771 and a four unit up to 958,000. So if you're considering a multifamily property, FHA is a great way to go. A single family condo duplex, same thing. So with a condo, uh, if it has an association, association is FHA approved. Now house hacking. House hacking is a FHA is great for house hacking. What house hacking is, is basically getting some revenue from your property. So let's look at the simplest way to house hack, which would be buying a multifamily property, a two, three, or four unit property. And you are generating income from your property. And the way that you're doing that is you're living in one unit and then you're renting out the other units. So if you buy a four unit, let's look at this example, for 600,000 with three and a half percent down. With a six and a half percent interest rate on a 30 year fixed mortgage, your principal and interest payment would be approximately 3660. Let's say we take taxes at 625, home insurance at 175, it might be more like 275, um, mortgage insurance at 478, your payment is 4938 and you're gonna live in one unit and rent out the others for, let's say 1,500 a month. You know, depending on your area, it could be 2,000, 2,200. But in this case, if you just use these numbers, all of your mortgage except $438 is paid. So when you're looking at it, looking at affordability and living a life that is stress-free, Doing a multifamily purchase for your first part purchase is a great way to start out because you're not obligated to, let's say, a $4,900 payment because, well, you are obligated to it, but you're not the only one making that payment. You have tenants that are helping you make that payment. And of course, you need to qualify for that. And when we talk about qualifying, we do use the rent for the units that you're not in to help you qualify. So what are some of the basic efforts? Credit score with 500 at 500 with 10% down, 580 with automated underwriting approval, and a 620 with a, for a manual underwrite is available here at Neighborhood Loans. We do source your down payment. So we want to know where the 3.5% came from along with the closing cost. So when buying, you do have other costs besides the down payment. So when you're starting to look at properties, make sure you talk to a lender first because you want to know what costs, like the title of these lender fees. Don't think that when you're buying, it's just three and a half down. When we look at your history of honoring debts, oh, one. We look at your history of honoring debts. I do have clients that have asked me from time to time, I had a late credit card payment last month. Well, if you've only had one late credit card payment, chances are that might be okay. The underwriting system it will forgive that one. If you have a history of debts that you have not paid, then definitely sit with a lender before you look at a property, set an appointment with me so we can go through your credit and understand, you know, 
hey, will this be an impact or have you reestablished income or reestablished good um, on-time payment history? Have you established your income? And uh, do you have a good history of being credit worthy? Uh, one thing we also to look at is below 57%. Okay, you could go to the next one. When we calculate a debt to income ratio, what that means is we're going to take your monthly payment debts, including the house you're living up, your car, your credit card, any uh, you, installment or revolving debt that you may have. Student loans are counted if they're in deferment, so we do need to talk about those um, when we meet. Um, so we take all those minimum monthly payments and then we divide that by your gross income. So we do look at your full-time job, alimony, child support, any sort of retirement benefits, any sort of disability income. So when we look at your debt to income ratio, we just want to make sure that you're below 57%. And now when we look at renovation loans, there are two different types of renovation loans. There's the limited which is under 35,000, nothing structural. And then there's a standard, which has uh, over 35,000 or anything structural. So depending on your needs, we'll go through the requirements for each loan in particular. But look for the neighborhood, look for the area. When you walk into the house, don't go look at 90 more houses trying to find the right house because the right house chances are doesn't exist and just renovate the house you're looking at that's in the perfect area for you. Buying after bankruptcy. This is one of my biggest questions. How can I qualify to buy while I'm either A, in bankruptcy or I filed bankruptcy? If you're in chapter 13, after you've made 12 months of on-time payments, you can buy with an FHA loan. The trustee does need to approve uh, and that's after I get you approved and you get out shopping, you get the contract, and then you present the contract to the trustee. If the bankruptcy is discharged, you need to wait one year. If it is dismissed, you need to wait two years. And if you file Chapter 7, you have to wait two years after discharge. So if you are had a bankruptcy, buying with an FHA loan is a great alternative. Here in Illinois... We do have down payment assistance options that are available. There's three different programs that are available. You have a forgivable that gives you um, money that is forgiven after a 10-year period. You have deferred, which needs to be paid off when you sell or refinance. And then you do have uh, one program that is repayable. That's an interest-free second loan that you're repaying $83.34 a month. So if you don't have quite all the money saved up for a down payment, we do have down payment assistance that's available. And that's for a single family and two units. Some of the key takeaways for an FHA loan. FHA loans are designed to help families attain home ownership. They're popular with first-time home buyers. They're intended for buyers who find it difficult to obtain other types of loans. FHA is insured by the federal government. Why is that important? Because with the mortgage insurance, that is why banks are more willing to lend money to buyers that have had past credit challenges, past hiccups, lower cash to put down. And that they may, you know, looking at it and saying first time home buyers might find that an FHA loan is the best way to go. Same with repeat buyers. If you already owned a home, you can look at buying a home again with an FHA loan. They are not only for, for first time home buyers. And looking at um, if if, there, if you wanted to talk about an FHA loan, you want to talk about other types of loans, like Juan mentioned, um, we do have options that are available for out-of-the-box, you know, somebody needs an out-of-the-box loan. Are you self-employed? Uh, get a lot of cash income that you're putting into the bank, but have a lot of expenses that you write off and the income just doesn't show taxes. Let's look at a bank statement loan. 1099 loans, investor loans, where we're looking at just the cash flow of the property, and then, of course, conventional and VA loans. If you want to set an appointment, 
here's my Calendly link. I am available. Um, the best way to set an appointment with me is by clicking on the Calendly or going to Calendly to schedule that. Um, should you have any questions, feel free to text, call, or email. And my website um, is mylenderkaren.com. Thanks for your time. And I'm here to help should you have any questions. Awesome. Well, Karen, thanks so much for all that great information. I encourage anybody who is listening to this um, to take advantage of uh, setting an appointment with you. Uh, use that Calendly link um, or go to mylenderkaren.com. Um, and, the, you know, for me, the easiest way to get a hold of Karen is uh, just pick up the phone and call her, 708 945 Again, uh, really. Real estate is a fantastic way to build wealth. Uh, the best way to get started is buy real estate and wait. Let the market uh, help you create that generational wealth. Uh, Karen is a great guy to uh, help you achieve uh, your, um, your, your real estate goals. Um, so I highly encourage you that if you have any questions regarding uh, mortgage financing or anything to do with real estate, give Karen a call. 708-945-6, I'm sorry, that's my number, 708-945-0221. Um, but uh, again, uh, she's a fantastic member here of our team. And uh, once again, Karen, thank you for your time and thank you for sharing all of your number, all of your knowledge, Thanks. all right? So have a, <laughs> Thanks. Have a great Looking day. Thanks, looking forward to helping. Bye.